Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Looking to prohibit uh, uh, these religious services, which are already technically prohibited by this public health order. That's the issue before the court. But they're also seeking to authorize police to detain anyone who they have reasonable and probable grounds to believe are intending to attend one of these prohibited worship services. So that's, that's an incredibly uh, broad uh, jurisdiction that the government's seeking to give to police. Uh, again, just to arrest or detain people seeking to exercise and responsibly exercise their charter freedoms. Through a petition that was filed, BC's public health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, heard the concerns and pleas of some churches who have been open in contrast to the public health orders. Now, she heard these pleas loud and clear and in response to them took actions that said, I hear you, I see you, and because you dare to challenge my authority, I'm coming for you too. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and in BC, dine-in restaurants, pot shops, indoor parks, and busy malls have remained opened, while churches and other places of worship are now heading into their third consecutive month of being banned by Bonnie. Well, that is unless you're filming a movie inside of a church. In that case, that type of gathering is essential in BC. A few days after that report from last Sunday, which you can find the full report at rebelnews.com, I came across a large gathering inside of a church right here in the same city that is Langley, BC, that is completely okay with public health. Apparently, you can't go practice your freedom of religious expression in a church in BC, but if you're in the film industry, you can fill a church up because I guess watching a movie or a TV show is far more essential than freedom of religion here. Take a look. Yeah, you know what that is? It's a church behind me and it's packed. You know what it's packed with? The movie industry or the film industry, they got tons of trailers in the back. They've got tons of crew parking over there. This is a gathering inside of the church that is deemed legal by Dr. Bonnie Henry in British Columbia. But no, don't be like Riverside Calvary Chapel. Social distance, space it out, have maybe 25 people. I don't know, maximum 30 per spaced out services. And you're going to receive a $2,300 Fine. Statistically, the thousands of places of worship in BC have not been the super spreaders they've been made out to be. The vast majority of them have been linked to zero COVID-19 cases. Meanwhile, you can still drink a beer through your mask and hit up the ski slopes in the busy tourist hotspot, Whistler, that was recently linked to 547 cases in just over a month. Now, it seems no matter how hard these churches work at making sure their COVID prevention standards are superior to other businesses that are allowed to be open, or how many people they provide support and counsel to during desperate times they can't seem to catch a break, especially from BC's public health officer. On January 7th, the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, the JCCF, filed a legal challenge on behalf of some places of worship and also some protesters whose right to peacefully assemble had been restricted by BC's public health orders. The petition challenged that the orders unjustifiably violate the rights and freedoms of BC residents protected by at least six different sections of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, that Dr. Bonnie Henry is overstepping her authority and crossing boundaries, including pointing out that BC's COVID-19 task force published guidelines for COVID-19 ethical thinking that BC's government is committed to exercise its powers in accordance with. The guideline for staying ethical while ruling over British Columbians includes that to whatever extent possible, individual autonomy, individual liberties, and cultural safety must be respected, and that any infringements on personal rights and freedoms must be carefully considered and the least restrictive of coercive means to be sought. So is Henry an ethical health official? Well, you tell me. You see, not every place of worship that the petition was on behalf of came forward with their church's name. But for the three that did, including one of them who you may have seen before here at rebelnews.com that has a in-depth COVID-19 safety plan, well, for them, forget the least of restrictions. 
Henry applied to seek an injunction in BC's Supreme Court that would grant police with the authority to arrest anyone who attends any religious gatherings put on by those three churches. But also, as you will see explained by Marty Moore, one of the JCCF's constitutional lawyers who is defending these churches in today's report, that if the judge grants her injunction, police would also have the authority to arrest anyone they believe was planning to attend any of those three churches. And I'm not just talking about all the open churches. Did you hear me? The same health officer who saw it fit to release prisoners who were convicted of being a real threat to society in the name of COVID-19 now views the least form of infringement on liberties of the Christians associated with the three churches that are open and had the audacity to defend their rights in courts against her orders, well, for them, let's just throw the book at them, shall we? This is our reality right now. And this matter is scheduled to be heard in BC Supreme Court today, Friday, January 12th, with a Justice Christopher Hinkson presiding over it. Now, I'll be sure to do another report on what actually happens today when I figure that out. So make sure you subscribe to us at rebelnews.com. But for now, I want you to hear from JCCF's Freedom Defending Marty Moore yourself. I caught up with him yesterday shortly after he arrived in Vancouver to get more insight on Dr. Henry's crazy application for an injunction, as well as to get a better understanding on exactly what data Dr. Bonnie Henry keeps referring to when she tries to justify these discriminatory restrictions. Take a look. All right, Marty, you just got off the flight. You're here in Vancouver over this crazy injunction that's being sought for. Now, let's start off with, did you ever think when you signed up for law, even though it's uh, in the field of constitutional rights, did you ever think that you would be defending pastors' rights to preach the gospel in person? Well, it's certainly uh, surprising what's going on here in British Columbia. I mean, to see the government... Uh, really cracking down on three particular churches who brought a constitutional challenge to the court when you know you can go to a restaurant take your mask off eat with you know a, a thousand other people in the same food court uh, it, it's pretty remarkable and uh, you know this is what the charter in my view is designed to protect and uh, we'll uh, see what justice uh, chief justice Hinkson rules tomorrow Yes, I'm patiently waiting for that. And, you know, you mentioned the food court. What about uh, Whistler? I think they had something like it was linked to 500 cases. Uh, the ski resorts are open, things like that. But for the life of me, I can't seem to come across whatever data Dr. Bonnie Henry is referring to when she justifies or attempts to justify the churches being closed. Do you have any insight of where she's getting those numbers from? or? Well, we've reviewed the government's data uh, fairly thoroughly. We've also had expert witnesses do that as well. Um, what we've identified in their data is 180 case transmissions noted. Now, that might not be for the entirety of the period. Uh, some of it is. Zero case transmissions, for example, on the island in religious settings. But 180 case transmissions associated with religious settings, so whatever that means. That's 180 COVID case transmissions out of over 70,000 in the province of British Columbia. Yet, religious settings are being treated more harshly in British Columbia than in anywhere else in the entire country. It is mind-boggling to me. I think you're totally right. And again, the contrast, uh, to me, it seems so discriminatory, the fact that almost everything else is open. Now, let's talk a little bit. There was a petition that was filed, and that's kind of what this injunction is in response to you. Can you tell us a little bit about the petition? Yeah, the Justice Center represents uh, three churches and four individuals who have filed a petition challenging the provincial health orders restrictions on protests, but also their restrictions at uh, the complete prohibition on in-person gatherings. And so in response, the government has now targeted those three specific churches with this injunction order. And they're seeking to prohibit uh, these religious services, which are already technically prohibited by this public health order. That's the issue before the court. But they're also seeking to authorize police to detain anyone who they have reasonable and probable grounds to believe are intending to attend one of these prohibited worship services. So that's, that's an incredibly uh, broad uh, jurisdiction that the government's seeking to give to police. Uh, again, 
just to arrest or detain people seeking to exercise and responsibly exercise their charter freedoms. We have clients who are following uh, mask mandates, following uh, limitations on people, uh, 50 person limits, social distancing is enforced. These are not social gatherings. These are religious worship services. And for the government to crack down on these uh, churches who've had not had a single case of COVID transmission within their service throughout nine or 10 months now of, of gathering, uh, in our view, it's not justified. And uh, that'll be the matter that Chief Justice Hinkson is ruling on tomorrow. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck. I mean, I can't wrap my head around this at all. And you mentioned social distancing and things like that. We've seen that firsthand at Rebel News. We did do two reports on Riverside Calvary Worship, which is one of the churches. And, you know, they're very good at limiting how many people are coming in there. They've got three different services, which helps with that too. Um, so why do you think, or what grounds does she have to kind of not allow these churches or these groups to be viewed as or have the same rules as like support groups, which I believe in BC are allowed about 50 people at a time. Yeah, I can't uh, understand why support groups are permitted, but if it's a religious worship service, it's not permitted. Uh, that the justification for that will have to be presented to the court. Uh, in our view, uh, the the actions of the government are discriminatory against people of faith. Okay, so we're going to end this report following up with what actually does happen tomorrow. But I want to ask one more question for the people out there who are totally on board with uh, more stricter things, cracking down on the churches, whether it be arresting, things like that, and kind of believe it's this trend that I see that uh, constitutional freedoms should not really be discussed or focused on when it comes to COVID-19. What type of advice do you have for those people? Well, I think it's imperative for all of us to actually follow the science on this. And uh, we've retained expert witnesses to address this matter. Again, 180 cases out of 70,000 cases. Uh, Dr. Bonnie her Henry herself actually stated that when we see uh, COVID rules being followed, whether that's in restaurants or in places of worship, uh, we don't see transmission. She stated that on October 26, 2020. Um, and that's the reality and the experience of our clients here in BC. And so uh, to say we must crack down on that kind of activity, it's the wrong message. What we really need are uh, guidance that gives, enables people to make wise choices to protect the vulnerable, um, but doesn't just uh, carte blanche. Uh, violate people's freedoms because in our view that cannot be justified and it should not be justified and upheld in a free and democratic society. Well thank you so much for the work that you're doing as well as the JCCF. We are so happy that you guys are on board and we also at Rebel News believe that the church is essential and all places of worship. So thank you. Thank you. Here at Rebel News, we know that freedom is essential. That's why we are working with pastors and also other citizens who have received tyrannical fines for doing things that we should be free to do, like worshiping in person. We connect them to top-notch freedom-fighting lawyers in our legal clinic through our special website called Fight the Fines. Dot com. You can head there to tell us your story of your fine, or you can team up with us to ensure that we can keep helping so many Canadians fight their fines by donating whatever you can there.